Hello, my name is Dr. Alan Kerry. Welcome to another podcast from the South Essex GP training website. With me, I have Dr. Sunil Gupta, and we're going to discuss the topic of medical ethics. So, Sunil, what is medical ethics and why is it important? Medical ethics is the study of moral values and judgments as they apply to medicine. Medical ethics is important because of the increase in profile, particularly in terms of should NHS fund new expensive drugs. Because it's also important because of increase in technology and also because of better informed society and increased public scrutiny. So, uh, can you outline the values which are applied to medical ethics? Some of the values applied to medical ethics are beneficence, which is a practitioner should act in the best interests of the patients, non maleficence as in not doing harm, autonomy, where the patient has the right to refuse or choose their treatment, justice, which concerns the distribution of scarce health resources and the decision of who gets what treatment, and that also involves things like fairness and equality. Another value is dignity. The patient and the person treating the patient have the right to dignity. And another value is truthfulness and honesty and the concept of informed consent. So how do we decide what's the right action to take in any given circumstance? Values such as these do not give answers as to how to handle a particular situation, but provide a useful framework for understanding conflicts. When moral values are in conflict, the result may be an ethical dilemma. The General Medical Council provides guidance in the form of its good medical practice. Yes, what does the GMC have to say about good medical practice in its 2006 document? It says a number of things. It says patients must be able to trust doctors with their lives and health. To justify that, that trust, you must show respect for human life and you must make the care of your patient the first concern. Protect and promote the health of patients and the public. Provide a good standard of practice and care, which can involve things like keeping your professional knowledge and skills up to date. Recognise and work within the limits of your competence. Work with colleagues in the ways that best serve patients' interests. The GMC says we, sh we, should, all, we should also work in partnership with patients, which involves listen to patients and respond to their concerns and preferences. Give patients the information they want or need in a way they can understand. Respect patients' right to reach decisions with you about their treatment and care. Support patients in caring for themselves to improve and maintain their health. The GMC also says we should treat patients as individuals and respect their dignity. We should treat patients politely and considerately. We should respect patients' right to confidentiality. We should also be honest and open and act with integrity. We must act without delay if, if we have good reason to believe that ourselves or a colleague may be putting patients at risk. We must never discriminate unfairly against patients or colleagues and we must never abuse our patients trust in us or the public's trust in the profession. And the GMC reminds us we are personally accountable for our professional practice and must always be prepared to justify our decisions and actions. Thank you. Can you say a few words about confidentiality? When may a doctor break confidentiality? Confidentiality is not a single ethical principle in itself. Rather, it's linked to several bioethical principles. Confidentiality shows a respect for an individual's autonomy and their right to control the information relating to their health. In keeping information about the patient's secret, the, pa the doctor is acting bene beneficently. In terms of when may a doctor break confidentiality, it's where this serious harm may occur to a third party, whether or not a criminal offence, e.g. a threat of serious harm to a named person. Where a doctor believes a patient to be the victim of abuse and the patient is unable to give or withhold consent to disclose. Where, without disclosure, a doctor would not be acting in the overall best interest of a child or young person who is his or her patient and incapable of consenting to disclosure. And when, without disclosure, the task of preventing or detecting a serious crime by the police would be prejudiced or delayed. Other 
situations are when without disclosure the task of prosecuting a serious crime would be prejudiced or delayed e.g. a patient tells you that he has killed someone several years ago where a doctor has a patient who is a health professional and has concerns over that person's fitness to practice and posing a serious danger to patients in his or her care and where a doctor has concerns over a patient's fitness to drive. Thank you. What are living wills? Every adult with a mental capacity has a right to agree to or refuse medical treatment. Living wills can be used to make clear a person's advanced wishes. They include general statements about a person's wishes and specific refusals of treatment called advanced directives. They set out which treatments the person would or wouldn't like to receive should they lose mental capacity in the future. Advanced statements aren't legally binding, but health professionals do have to take them into account when deciding on a course of action. Family and friends can also use them as evidence of the, patient, of the person's wishes. Thank you. So moving on, could you outline the, doc the concept of the doctrine of double effect? Some interventions can create a positive outcome while also potentially doing harm. The combination of these two circumstances is known as the double effect. Use of morphine in the dying patient can ease the pain and suffering of the patient while simultaneously hastening the demise of the patient through suppression of the respiratory drive. What does the GMC guidance have to say about providing contraception without parental consent to patients who are under 16 years old? The doctor needs to take into account that the young person will understand the professional's advice, the young person cannot be persuaded to inform their parents, the young person is likely to begin or to continue having sexual intercourse with or without contraceptive treatment. Unless the young person receives, receives contraceptive treatment, their physical or mental health or both are likely to suffer and the young person's best interests require them to receive contraceptive advice or treatment with or without parental consent. Thank you. We've now got eight fictional cases which hopefully will help you to think through some of the concepts of medical ethics that we've discussed further uh, with your colleagues and perhaps with your trainers. Sunil, can you outline these eight fictional cases for us? Case one, 15 year old female patient would like to start the contraceptive pill. Does it make any difference if her boyfriend is 26 years old? Suppose her boyfriend is her teacher. What are you going to do? Case two, a patient is leaving your practice and requests you remove from the medical notes any mention of a termination of pregnancy she had 10 years ago. Suppose the patient is going to live in an isolated rural area and her new father-in-law is the only GP. Do you agree to the patient's request? Case 3. A farmer asks you to sign a letter to support him having a gun licence. Suppose he has a history of depression five years ago. What are you going to do? Case 4. A terminally ill patient asks you to give him something to take him out of his misery. What are you going to do? Case 5. You offered cannabis at a party. What if the person offering you the cannabis is your GP partner? What should you do? Case 6. You notice a possible squamous cell carcinoma on the face of a stranger in front of you in the supermarket queue. Do you say anything to them? Case 7. You are offered a £1,000 as a gift by a grateful patient. Do you accept? Case 8. You are a passenger in a 747 plane and the pilot asks if there is a doctor on the plane. Suppose you have drunk three glasses of wine. Do you go to help? Excellent. Both Sunil and I hope that you've found that helpful and thank you for listening. We hope you'll listen to some of the other podcasts from the South Essex GP training website. Thank you.